Towed systems use mother vessel to supply power and propulsion to the vehicle. I'll tell you more about this in just over two minutes. What down there, folks? One way of surveying is to send signals down through the water and measuring the time it takes for the reflection to come back, or using subsea sensors to measure various in-water parameters directly. The more water the signal has to travel through, however, the greater the signal losses. Conversely, the closer the detector is to the seabed, the greater the detail. One cost-effective way of carrying out near seafloor surveys is by towed systems. The most elementary of these is a towfish. Most are long, thin, torpedo-shaped devices, often with stabilising fins, but by no means all. Sometimes shallow water systems can be small, deep water systems can be much larger, maybe up to four metres. They have to be as big as that to incorporate the flotation that makes them neutrally buoyant so they can be towed smoothly over the seafloor. A towfish is connected to the mother vessel by an armoured umbilical that not only acts as a power conduit to supply electricity to the sensor, but also used to exchange data and control signals. They may have a fibre optic core. Um, some deep water tow systems could be 10,000 metres, what, 10 kilometres in length. Towfish are normally connected halfway to the, along the body, um, near its centre of gravity. If they're connected to the nose, it would actually pull the front up. In operation, a towing body has two main variables, its tow speed and the length of the cable. In a normal survey, um, speed is about five kilometres and typical ratio of cable length to tow depth is four to one. This means 400 feet of cable is needed to tow uh, at a depth of 100 feet. If the tow speed were fast enough and the towfish light enough, it would potentially be dragged up to the surface, moving in and out of the waves like a water skier. This is called porpoising. Most towfish, however, are rel relatively heavy and rely on the mass to gravitate down towards the seabed. As the tow speed starts to increase, however, the drag on the tow cable gradually pulls the fish back upwards through the water column. There are two main strategies to try and keep the fish as near to the seabed as possible. One is to design the tow fish to be especially heavy, maybe adding a clump weight to increase its mass and deter the body from rising. The second is to add some sort of depressor, and this creates a significant hydrodynamic downward force that overcomes the drag and pulls the tow cable downwards as the wing moves through the water. The depressor essentially changes the dive angle, that's the angle between the horizontal tow fish and the line up to the surface. By artificially steepening the dive angle, the amount of cable used is considerably reduced to a point where it's possible to tow equipment at um, a depth of 100 feet using 200 feet of cable instead of previously 400 feet of cable. And the advantage is that smaller, less expensive cable handling systems can be used. It's useful if there are no ferrous metals in the depressor, so they can be used with magnetometers. Next time we're going to have a look at we're going to compare the towed systems with their UVs. If you want to know more about underwater technology, read UT2 or UT3, the magazine and online magazine of the Society for Underwater Technology.